Live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. Dave McCann alongside Kristen Kozlowski. Our pleasure to welcome Barry Trammell from the Oklahoman in town. Checking out Provo for the very first time. Welcome. Well, thanks, guys. I've been uh, been here two two days in Provo and three days in Utah and really enjoyed it. What do you think? What's, what about Provo? What's How different is Provo from the great state of Oklahoma? Um, you got these big rock things that go high <laughs> into the sky, and I'm trying to figure out what they are. Uh, we don't have mountains like this in Oklahoma, so uh, it's fun, and the setting is just gorgeous. You know, I've seen, you know, Lavelle Edwards Stadium from television and the great view and the setting, but to be here and drive through the valley and, you know, drive around town, it's, it's uh, just a fabulous setting. You're here with your wife and uh, able to see some of those sites. We did want to ask you, though, some of the big news in the conference is a new commissioner. So with Bob Bowlesley being uh, released or stepping down, what is your take on that and, and how that all proceeded? Well, you know, Bob's been, Bob's 70 years old. He's been on the job 10 years and has been a tumultuous 10 years. Um, you know, just in the last two years, we've had COVID hit and, you know, decimate everyone's athletic budget wiped out uh, a uh, virtual year of, of, uh, of normalcy in terms of scheduling and those things. And on top of that, Oklahoma and Texas, you know, last summer, you know, uh, hightail it out of the conference or say they're going to and really put the Big 12 in risk and um, for poaching and perhaps even dissolution. So uh, Bowlesby did a great job putting it back together, you know, getting people rallied, saying, hey, we can, we can not only survive, we can prosper, got – Four great candidates, um, not exactly the four I would have picked, but BYU has always been at the top of my list for, right. for coming into the Big 12. And, um, you know, Cincinnati is a, a good addition. Central Florida is a good addition. Uh, Houston's going to be good. So it, it's going to be great. And, um, but he, he was able to sort of rally that around. And then, uh, you know, now he's 70, and he's he said, I've got three years left on my contract, and I'm not going to extend it past then. And he told the presidents in, the, in recent weeks, you know, this is going to be it for me. If you want to plan for the future, now's the time to start talking about it. And they just came to the decision, let's just start looking for a successor. And he may be, you know, they may find it in a month. They may find it in two years. But he's going to be around to help the transition. What kind of person do they need heading into a new TV deal? Uh, Oklahoma and Texas leaving. Will they leave earlier if there's a commissioner a little more friendly and less offended on how it all shook down? What, what do you see the next two years for this new commissioner and then beyond? Well, the number one thing for any commissioner is, is to be savvy with the media rights. You know, the Big 12 uh, contract comes up in 24 They'll, going forward, you know, a vital interest to BYU and everybody else is, is how that goes down. It's a new age. You guys know more about television than I do, but it's a new age with the streaming, with uh, a lot of different new people coming in. You know, Amazon is, is broadcasting the NFL now, right. so, you know, anything could happen. But uh, being very aware and, and uh, proactive on that front is number one. And number two is being... Uh, you know, sort of a, a facilitator among the schools, keeping people together. Uh, we thought Bowlesby was doing that. Um, you know, the OU Texas thing blindsided him as much as everybody. People say, uh, you know, it's his job to know OU and Texas were leaving. And uh, that's true. It was also sort of my job to know it, and I didn't know it, so I'm not going to be too hard on him. Right. So, uh, you know, it, it, was a, it was a tough it was a tough two years, tough ten years. And I think he overall he's done a very good job. He's, the Big 12 is, is in good shape. And that hasn't, wasn't the truth 10 years ago when he took over. Uh, the Big 12 is not as financially strong or as status strong as the SEC or the Big 10. But it's at least on par with the Pac-12 and, uh, and the ACC. And that would have been hard to believe 10 years ago. So he deserves a lot of credit for that. He's 70. He's got 10 grandkids. He said the other day he's never taken more than one week off at a time wow. in his life. So he's, he's ready to do that. He's yeah. due, for sure. Uh, how do you like the new Big 12? And you've always been an advocate for BYU, but what's your take on the teams coming in and the changes? Well, I like it uh, because of a couple of things. One, the variety. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot of similarities between Brigham Young and the University of Houston. Um, but variety is the spice of life. I, I sort of enjoy that. Uh, and and, and it, it seems like somebody's looking out for the Big 12 because just in the last year or two, I mean, you look at Cincinnati made the college football playoff. Yeah. Houston made the Final Four and almost made it again. Um, Brigham Young's 
with the football renaissance. You know, had two great years in a row. And uh, Kalani seems to really have things on the upswing. So it's perfect timing. And uh, the thing I like about it on the football side is I had this discussion with Mike Gundy the other day. And he said, we're talking about divisional play and how we split the divisions. He said, I, th I just want it to be fair. I want the same amount of good teams in each division. I said, well, Mike, who are going to be the good teams? I mean, we don't know who's going to be dominant. Right. Well, you know, Alabama is not in the Big 12, you know, and – is it, is it going to be Oklahoma State and Baylor who actually played for the Big 12 title? Is it going to be Cincinnati and Brigham Young? Who are going to be the best teams? We don't really know. And to me, that's exciting because college football often is plagued by sameness. Yeah. Same teams year after year win the conferences. You know, and, and Oklahoma won six in a row in the Big 12. Clemson run, won six in a row in the ACC. Uh, Ohio State dominates the, the Big Ten. Alabama generally dominates the SEC. Uh, and Pac-12 has been about the only place where you find much parity. I think parity is going to be great. And if, if we go into every season not knowing who's going to win the league, that's a good thing. You bet. Barry Trammell from the Oklahoma Outstanding Writer. Uh, do you really believe that when the Big 12 schedule comes out in October, which will include BYU and the three new teams, that Texas and Oklahoma will still be in that? Yes. I actually think no, I, Texas wants to go yesterday. Right. Texas is ready to go. Texas is different than the rest of us. They got the money to just write a check and do whatever they want to. Uh, the rest of the world's not that way. Certainly Oklahoma's not that way. You know, they just like everybody else, they took a big hit in COVID. Yeah. Uh, 20 or so, $25 million budget deficit because of COVID. So it's not, you know, despite their incredible tradition, despite their incredible success, they don't have massive piles of cash laying around. So they're not ready to write an $80 million, you know, ca cashier's check. So uh, on top of that, Lincoln Riley up and bolted for Southern Cal. People got mad at him, uh, to which I said, you know, you guys left Big 12 and bolted. Why can't Lincoln Riley, you know, bolt? I saw his house. And it made enough yeah. sense to well, me. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> if he only had a view, if he, yeah. if he just had a view. Right. But, um, but Lincoln Riley's out. Brent Venables is in. And uh, OU, frankly, OU football is undergoing a culture change. Right. Uh, they not. They may not try to win a bunch of Heisman trophies with their quarterback. But I think they're going to try to start tackling people, and uh, it's going to take Brent Venables a, a few years to get this new defensive mentality set. I think OU is okay with staying in the Big 12 for another couple, three years until Brent gets his program up and running, and is more SEC, you know, level. So I think I think you'll see the Sooners and the Longhorns. In 23 and probably 24. Good. So Good. I, uh, I think uh, the masterminds at the Big 12 will determine what's the toughest schedule they could give OU in Texas. And if that includes a trip to Provo, they'll be here. <laughs> Coming to Provo. Good. You mentioned Mike Gunny just a, a few moments ago as we were talking about that. And then Texas, Oklahoma leaving eventually. We're not sure when to the SEC. But what are your thoughts? Gundy brought up that there might be more, more expansion. What's your thoughts on the expansion of more? Yeah, I, I actually was intrigued by that because I really hadn't heard that other than Bob Bowlesby mentioned it in passing when uh, when the four new schools were uh, uh, introduced in September. And he said, you know, eventually we could expand. I hadn't heard any follow-up on that, and then Gundy brings it out of the blue. I wouldn't put a ton of, of uh, stock in that because while Gundy, Gundy is fascinating and interesting, he generally just talks off the top of his head. He's not really an insider. He doesn't want to be. He just sometimes just talks. But if the Big 12 did go to 14, the, the one issue for me is I can find them a 13th team. Doesn't take me very long. I can't find the 14th. I think Boise State would be a really good addition to the Big 12. I don't know who the 14th team would be. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know another school that's uh, – of course, there's not any Brigham Youngs out there n left – on the, on the market, um, or, or even a Cincinnati or Central, or Central Florida. But, you know, I like B Boise State's potential, but beyond that, to me, it's, I don't see it. Considering where BYU is now in moving into the Big 12, and go back 10 years, 11 years, when they left the Mountain West to become independent, back then did you think they were doing the right thing? And now over the long term with the result they're getting, did they do the right thing? I, I was curious about it. Uh, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, when it happened, um, I sort of, 
I sort of understand BYU's mission and, and, you know, how BYU is so different from any other school. So I, under, I, didn't, I didn't pass judgment. I just I wondered what the play was. It's turned out to be uh, a, a, an excellent move. Uh, I know it was also uh, troubled. I mean, I know it, was, it created some rocky situations. I know it's not ideal. Um, but I also know that, you know, the, the Mountain West – then and the Mountain West, frankly, has has sort of found its footing a little bit in this ten years and, and has done better. But the Mountain West, especially with Utah leaving, was not a good. That was not a good uh, situation for BYU. I understood that. Independence is not is not ideal. Nobody really wants to be independent other than Notre Dame. Um, in the old days, all kinds of people were independent, but it's not really viable today. And uh, Brigham, I tell you, Brigham Young finding or landing in the West Coast Conference for its other sports. Huge. To me, that was the key, yeah. more than football. Because if you got a 65,000-seat stadium and you fill it, in football, you know, some things go up, some things go down, but you're going to be okay. But those other sports, and the West Coast Conference has actually gotten really, you know, fairly prominent on that level with Gonzaga basketball and a lot of, a lot of the other sports. So... To me, the WCC is is what really sort of made this thing salvageable for BYU sports over the last decade. And and like I said, in the in the ten years, Brigham Young's done very well. You know, uh, Kalani's been you know such a uh, a great thing for BYU. I got to meet him for the first time yesterday. What'd you think? I was well. Guy. I've been impressed with him before. Liked him just <laughs> on the television, but you know, blown away uh, by his authentic authenticity. Um, his humanity uh, just seems to be the you know the real deal. And, you know anybody can fool you, but if if Kalani ends up fooling me, I'll be surprised. Now over the next handful of years, you mentioned this is your first trip to Provo, and we can finish up on this one. Uh, uh, we're gonna have a lot of Big 12 fans come to Provo for the very first time, uh, just like you. What uh, what do they have in store? What do you anticipate uh, folks following their team to Provo for the very first time and and taking a look around and going? Uh, we're really glad they're in the league, or or what? Well, th- people are going to be thrilled. Um, you know, I was telling the guys the other day, uh, in the old Big 12, we had a mountain town, Boulder, Colorado. Yeah. And everybody liked going to Boulder because it was so different, and it was a cool setting, and Folsom Fields, a historic old stadium set up against a hill. And then Colorado left. A year later, we get West Virginia, so we got our mountain fix. Now we're going to have two mountain towns. We're going to have two mountain settings. Uh, it's different, you know, that's the Appalachians over there. And now uh, coming to the Rockies, it's just a glorious setting. When people, uh, I assume they'll fly into Salt Lake and, and drive, uh, drive down, it's going to be, it's going to be great. And uh, they're going to be stunned at, uh, at Provo and the setting. You know, we, we see it on television, but, you know, the, uh, uh, the mountains uh, uh, overlooking Lavelle Edwards Stadium. And I tell you, I think they're going to be, they're going to be thrilled with the atmosphere and, you know, one of the things about BYU I appreciate is you sort of know what you're going to get with the fans. Um, you know, I've never been to a BYU home game, but I'm pretty sure I could bring my, you know, my nine-year-old granddaughter and not really have to worry about too yep. much. Uh, I'll be going to Auburn, Alabama here soon. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to take my nine-year-old granddaughter to Auburn, <laughs> Alabama, if you know what I mean. So yeah. I think people are going to really enjoy it and enjoy the environment and the culture. Um, you know, uh, somebody somebody on campus yesterday, uh, or, or maybe somebody in town told me, you know, we don't have a ton of religious schools in the Big 12. Baylor, um, TCU even isn't really a right. religious school anymore. Uh, but we do have a lot of religious people. Um, and it's sort of what Oklahoma and Texas sort of hangs its hat on. So I think they're going to feel comfortable when they come here. And I think they're going to enjoy the football and um, all the other sports that Brigham Young uh, s- uh, supplies. And like I said, it's just the setting is so different. You know, when, when West Virginia got in, we're goofy. We don't know anything about geography. We didn't even know you flew into Pittsburgh to get to West Virginia. We didn't even know Pittsburgh was a great city. Now, if, if you've never been to Pittsburgh, it's breathtaking. And going to Pittsburgh is fabulous. So going to West Virginia is a highlight for a lot of Big 12 fans. Flying to Pittsburgh, enjoy the city, drive down to the mountains to, to Morgantown. I think the same thing's going to happen with BYU. Once you put uh, your weekend visit down on paper, where can folks find it and read about it? Well, I'm at theoklahoman.com, and um, I'm going to do a series on Brigham Young 
don't have it scheduled. It won't be this coming week, but eventually. But I also write a travel blog everywhere I go, and um, I've had I've gotten two posted already on on Salt Lake. Uh, got to sit down and write my first Provo, but I'll have two or three on Provo. So Oklahoman.com, and uh, you can you know try to keep up with the Big 12 as, as much as possible. But like I said. I'm no expert. I didn't even see OU in Texas coming. Look, Bob Bowlesby on his visit here was presented with a cougar tail and couldn't finish it. You don't, no pressure. You don't have to finish that thing either. But uh, I imagine that might be on your menu before the day's done. Yes. Uh, good luck with you that. Try one. Uh, I will do it. I will uh, Barry do it. Trammell, the Oklahoman. Thank you. And uh, again, welcome to Provo. We'll see you back here in uh, a season or two. Hopefully in 23. Yes.